All right, this is fourth grade, module one, lesson 14. And in this lesson, we are going to continue having our students practice that standard algorithm, although I'm going to um, show how the number disks and the place value chart leads into the standard algorithm. But really, at this point, our goal is for students to understand uh, the standard algorithm. Students who are struggling with that, go ahead and continue allowing them to use their stand, uh, the place value chart and number disks. That's fine until they finally understand the standard alg algorithm. That's cool. The one thing we want to avoid is just telling students, just, just trust me and memorize it this way. You don't need to understand it. And that's kind of the thing we want to uh, stay away from. We really want uh, all the rules in mathematics to make sense and come from a place where the students understand. We're also going to be uh, practicing some tape diagrams as we go as well. So here it says, uh, use this standard algorithm to solve the following subtraction problems. And this is the one I'm going to use. But before I show you that standard algorithm, I want us to make sure we understand the place value method and make sure that students understand that, parents and teachers under understand it, because it's this understanding that's going to lead students to understand the standard algorithm better. And so I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model 371,089. And I'm going to go fairly quickly. Uh, 300,000, and then, then we have seven ten thousands. And notice I'm doing it in the 10 frame style. So five, and, and basically I'm creating columns of five, five and five. I'm going to keep going. We have one in the thousands. We have nothing in the hundreds place. We have eight in the tens. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, and we have nine in the ones. All right, so now that I've modeled it correctly, in this lesson, uh, what, what accelerated, I mean, what Eureka Math is asking us to do is to kind of like in the lesson part, teacher. This is mostly for the teachers. In the lesson part that you're supposed to be teaching today, the concept development, um, you they're, they're suggesting for you to have the students set up all the regrouping first and then subtract everything. Whereas oftentimes many adults have been taught to look at a column, if subtraction is need, if regrouping is needed, regroup and then subtract. Then look at the next column. Do we need to regroup? Good. Now subtract. And they mix and match between, alternate between regroup, then subtract, regroup, then subtract, regroup, and then subtract. Now in Eureka Math, they appear to be saying, no, do all your regrouping first, set up the problem correctly, then subtract. All right, so that's what we'll do. So I'm going to bounce back and forth. Now it says we have nine, take away two. That's good. We don't need to regroup. This says we have eight tens. We're supposed to take away nine tens. Ah, we need to do some re regrouping. So we have to do some cashing in. So I'm going to go all the way over, two columns over, because the hundreds column has nothing. So I'm going to take this thousands, and that thousands, I'm going to cash him in. I'm going to cash him in for ten hundreds. So cash him in for ten hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now that I have ten hundreds, I can cash one of these hundreds in for ten tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now Instead of having one in the thousands place, I have none in the thousands place. And instead of having none in the hundreds place, I now have nine in the hundreds place. And instead of having eight in the tens place, I now have 18. So, uh, and then I'm going to go to the ten thousands place. I have seven, take away two. Can I do that? Sure. Uh, but, ah, look at this. Let's go back into the thousands place. I have, now I have nothing in the thousands place, but I'm supposed to take away five thousands. So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to do some more regrouping. So I'm going to take one of these ten thousands, and I'm going to get ten in the thousands place. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So instead of having, let's see, seven in the ten thousands place, I'm now only going to have six in the ten thousands place. And kind of going back here, instead of having zero, well, first I had one, then I had zero, now I'm going to have ten in the thousands place. And so let's look back. I have seven. Now I have six. <laughs> And then I'm supposed to take away two. Well, that's good. I could do that. And then lastly, I have three in the hundred thousands place. Take away nothing, and that's good. So I did a lot of regrouping over here. All right. And now let's take a look at what that would look like in the standard algorithm technique. And then I'll go back and finish here. So let's go over here. I have nine. Take away two. That's golden. That's cool. I have 8, take away 9. Ooh, I can't do that right now in this context, right? So I'm going to go two columns over, and I need to take this 1,000, meaning now I'll have 0, and I need to cash it in for 10, and now I'll have 10 hundreds. But then I need to take one of these 10s, I mean one of these hundreds, leaving us with 9 hundreds, and I need to cash him in for 10 tens, so I have 18 tens. All right, boy, I'm doing a lot of regrouping. So here is cool, 9 take away 2. Here is cool, 18 take away 9. Here is cool, 9 take away 1. Uh-oh, 0 take away 5, that's no good. So I need to go to the 10 thousands place. I need to take one of those 10 thousands, leaving us with 6. And then instead of having zero thousands, I will now have ten thousands. So now I can look and say, okay, nine and two, that's good. Eighteen and take away nine, that's good. Nine take away one, that's good. Ten take away five, that's good. Six take away two, yeah, that's good. And then three take away nothing, that's good. Woohoo! We can now finally subtract. All right? So, um, if I were to subtract, well, no, let's subtract. <laughs> 9 take away 2 is 7. And then 18 take away 9, that's 9. 9 take away 1 is 8. And then 10 take away 5 is 5. 6 take away 2 is 4. And 3, take away nothing, is 3. Uh, teachers, notice I kind of slipped into some shorthand language. I, I started to just, instead of talking about the units and the place value, I just started saying 6, take away 2, or 9, take away 1. Uh, be careful with that. Your students have to be ready for that kind of shorthand. Uh, if we're doing 9, take away 1, we really need to be saying 9 hundredths, take away 1 hundredths. So just to make sure that everything is golden and it's all going to work, let's subtract and let's just take a look. So this says we have 9. It says 9 take away 2. So we've got 9 take away 2, 1, 2, and that leaves us with 7. And then uh, this says we should have 18 take away 9, and sure enough that we have 8 up here and 10 down here, so we're going to take away 9. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that leaves 9. And then this says we should have 9 take away 1. And sure enough, there's our 9. And we're going to take away 1. And that leaves us with 8. And then this says we should have 10 take away 5. And sure enough, there's our 10. Take away 5. I'm going to just take away 5 right there. And we have 5 left over. And then this says we have 6 take away 2, and sure enough, there's our 6 take away 2, leaves us with 4. And then lastly, we have 3 take away nothing, we have 3 take away nothing. And so that's the building number sense when we're teaching the standard algorithm, all right, is using these dots as one technique. I, I suppose it's not the only technique, but it's the technique being used by Eureka Math, so let's honor it. We're going to speed this along a little bit. It says uh, the New York Public Library had 124,061 books checked out. And of those books, 31,000 
117 were mystery. How many of the books checked out were not mystery? So one way to think of this would be you have mystery and you have not mystery. And I'm going to draw a tape for each of these. And, it, and I'm just going to happen to draw them identical. Um, and then it says, let's go back and read, New York Public Library had 124,061 books checked out. Of those books, 31,117 were mystery. So that tells us that we know that this number right here is 31,117 books. Now if I continue reading, it says, how many of the books checked out were not mystery? That means this number we don't know. That's the not mystery. And then what are we going to do with this big number right here? Well, that's the total. So that means this number right here, 124,061. Right, so that's one way to draw our tape diagram. And then, of course, we are going to subtract. Now, another way that we could have drawn the tape diagram is we could have put that the tapes side by side. And we could have said, well, mystery is 31,117. Not mystery is a big old fat question mark. And the total is 124,061. So we have our choice of which tape diagram we want to draw, uh, stacked method or the side-by-side -side method. I'm not going to show you the subtraction. I think you guys could do that on your own. And the last one, just I wanted to show another tape diagram because I find that parents and teachers are kind of struggling with that at this point in the uh, transition to Common Core. So let's draw that tape diagram. And I'm going to model also, I'm really modeling what I do when I read these questions and how I come to understand. So it says a Class A dump truck can haul... 239,000 pounds of dirt. So I'm going to underline that. And then it says a Class C dump truck can haul 600,200 pounds of dirt. That's a weird number to say. 600,200 pounds of dirt. How many more pounds can a Class C truck haul than a Class A truck? And now the one thing I notice is we have two subjects in our problem. We have class A and class C, all right? So oftentimes, when I see subjects like that, I just, as a, as a mathematician, I like to make it a stacked and give them a label. And I'm going to draw that A stands for class A, and this C stands for class C. And I start off drawing both tapes the same length. And then... If I need to, I edit the tapes after I start, you know, as I read the problem again. And I'm going to go back, and now I've got the subjects. I've identified the subjects. I've drawn two tapes the exact same length. Now I'm going to go back and read for more information. It says a Class A dump truck can haul 239,000 pounds of dirt. Okay, so that tells me that this length right here is 239,000 pounds. And I'm going to continue reading. It says, a Class C dump truck can haul 600,200 uh, 600, pounds of dirt. Ah, well, I know that that number is larger than this number, so this guy, I need to extend him a little bit. So I'm going to extend him a little bit. Doesn't matter exactly how much. And that whole length right there, is 600,200 pounds. All right, so I've got that part. Here's my Class A dump truck. Here's my Class C dump truck, which consequently, by the way, because this tape and this tape were the original same length, that means if I wanted to, I can say that this piece right here is also 239,000 pounds, couldn't I? Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this last sentence. How many more pounds can a C truck, or a Class C truck, haul than a Class A truck? So what they're saying is they want to know 
this piece right here. How much longer is this tape diagram than this tape diagram? And there's my classic tape diagram technique. And then uh, what, would the what would the subtraction problem look like? It would look like this. 600,000 take away 239,000. And there's your math problem. I'm not going to show you how to do it because I think on this problem the important thing was learning how to draw a tape diagram. There's clearly other tape diagrams we could have drawn. I think this is my favorite one though. And that wraps up fourth grade module one lesson 14 continuing to practice that standard algorithm of subtraction.